Hey what's up guys, in today's video I'm gonna tell you guys 5 of the best tips on how to handle a solo vs squad situation like a pro in Free Fire. First of all, let's start with tip number 1. Now one of the most important things that you should do before getting into a solo vs squad situation is to loot the most necessary items alright if you don't have enough loot it's gonna be very hard to win a 1v4 fight so here are four of the main things that i recommend that you pick up very fast first of all try to find a really good gun try to use a gun that you know how to use well don't go with guns that you don't know how to use well for example they say that you're an smg user so if you know how to use smgs very well don't go with shotguns alright it just doesn't matter if your friend is using it pretty well but just go with the gun that you know how to use well alright the next thing that i recommend that you guys get is a really good armor a helmet and a vest the reason that the helmet and the vest are very important is because they help you to reduce the amount of damage that you get which is very important in solo versus squad situations so try to find a helmet and a vest and the other reason is that you'll also be able to survive a lot more longer in fights now the third thing that you need to loot is gluos gluos are kind of like your best friend in solo squad situations they will help you to defend and they will also help you to separate enemies as well i will talk about how to separate enemies later on in this video it is actually a really good tip i will talk about that later on but anyways the fourth thing that you need to quickly pick up is medkits medkits are very useful one of the most important medkits are the super medkits the reason for that is because super medkits will help you to get a lot more hp in a short amount of time so try to find some super medkits and another very important thing is the inhaler inhalers can help you to quickly get HP when an enemy is chasing you, let's say an enemy is chasing you, while that enemy is chasing you and while you're running, you'll be able to heal up yourself as well. So inhalers are also very important. So before you get into a 1v4 situation, first of all, try to find these four main things and try to get enough of these things, all right? Tip number two. Now, I think you, all of you guys have gone through 1v4 situations and you guys know how hard it is to like take down four enemies at once in short range, right? Now. The next tip that I want to give to you guys is to take down as many enemies as you can from long range. The reason for that is because it's a lot easier to take down enemies from long range than in short range because in short range the fights can be a lot messier and the enemies might also do a lot more damage to you but if you take down enough enemies from a long range it will be a lot easier when the other enemies come in short range so for example let's say that you took down two enemies from long range there will only be two more enemies remaining right so it will be a lot easier for you guys to take down those two enemies when they come in short range so my tip for you guys the second tip is to try to take down as many enemies as you can from long range now let's move on to tip number three now one of the biggest mistakes that many players do when engaging enemies in short range is that they go straight in and rush all those four enemies at once that's one of the biggest mistakes a lot of the time they might think that they will be able to easily one tap them or drag headshot them i even i mean i even have done this in the past where i just go straight into enemies thinking that i will be able to one tap them and this is actually a very big mistake the reason for that is because for example, let's say that you were not able to take them down. Let's say you did a one tap on the first one, but you were not able to do a one tap on the second one. So if those three other remaining enemies attack you, that will be a lot of damage, right? If you're just going straight into the enemies, let's say there are four enemies. If you go straight into them, they will do a lot more damage if they attack you at once. So you'll get eliminated very easily. So instead of going straight into rushing them, try to take them down one by one not all at once but one by one and one of the best ways to do this is by separating the enemies now one of the best ways to separate enemies is by confusing them there are so many ways that you can confuse enemies one of the best ways there is to confuse enemies is by movement and dodging enemies all right this is a really good skill that you guys need to develop and i will tell you guys two ways that you can develop this skill first of all what you need to do is go to the training ground without a gun right no guns go to the training ground without a gun and try to dodge as many attacks as you can right it's okay to get eliminated because as soon as you get eliminated in the training ground you can just come back right so it's okay to get eliminated try to dodge as many attacks as you can in the training ground and try to move from cover to cover it's okay to get attacked try to move from cover to cover and dodge many attacks and that's the first way of practicing this skill and the second way that you guys can practice this skill is by going to Catalysto. the reason for that is because there are so many houses in Catalysto. so try to move from house to house this is also a really good skill try to move from house to house and try to practice not getting stuck if you get stuck it's just gonna reduce your movement speed all right so make sure that you try to not get stuck and also try to practice this so that you can move from house to house very fast and once you practice these two things and once you get really good 
at the skill of dodging enemies and moving very fast, you can use that when you get into solo as a squad situations. Now the reason that this will be very useful is because when you are using this, sometimes there will be moments where an enemy will be alone. When you are like confusing the enemy and separating them, there will be times where one enemy will be alone and that's the best time for you guys to quickly attack and eliminate that enemy, alright? Once you knock the enemy down, try to eliminate him. The reason for that is because if you don't eliminate that enemy, that enemy's teammate might come near him and revive him. So that's a really big problem. So make sure that you no, can eliminate but sometimes there might be times where you won't be able to eliminate let's say that two or three enemies are coming together so in that situation it's not a really good idea to attack them and uh, finish them right so there might be some times like that so in those type of situations try to quickly dodge those attacks and run and confuse the enemies but if you get the time to uh, eliminate an enemy try to quickly knock and eliminate now let's move on to tip number four now one of the most important things before going into a 1v4 situation is getting a really good character combination if you have a really good set of characters it will be a lot more easier for you to win the match so when you're selecting a set of characters try to select a set of characters that are really good for 1v4 situations there are so many characters in free fire that are really good for 1v4 situations so in this video i will tell you guys a character combination consisting of most of these characters so the first character the active character of this character combination is going to be the wukong character the reason for that is because as you guys know the wukong character gives us defense but the main reason is because when you knock down one enemy his skill resets so you will be able to use his skill again and again right so that's the main reason that we are going to be using the wukong character as the active character of this character combination and for the second character we are going to use another character that's going to be very useful for 1v4 situations and that's the dasha character the dasha character when you knock down enemies the dasha character will increase your movement speed which is a very important thing and the second thing that the dasha character will improve is your rate of fire if your rate of fire is increased you will be able to quickly take down more enemies as well right so uh, movement speed and rate of fire are very important and dasha character will help you to get that now the third character of this character combination is gonna be the auto character now the auto character is a very powerful character i don't know why a lot of people don't use him the reason that the auto character is very useful is because when you knock down one enemy he will slow down the nearby enemies and he will also tag their locations you will be able to know where these enemies are if they are nearby you will slow them down and also tag them so it will be a lot easier for you guys to plan your next step if you know which side they're coming from right so that's also one of the best characters for solo as a squad situations now the fourth character the last character of this character combination is the jota character the reason that we're going to be using the jota character is because the other characters don't give you any hp right so the jota character will give you hp and first of all when you attack an enemy the jota character will give you a little bit of hp but when you knock down an enemy you'll get a lot more hp so, so these are the four characters of this character combination now let's move on to tip number five now this is one of the most powerful things in free fire and the reason for that is because one of these things could take down a whole squad at once and now when i say this i think a lot of you guys know what the thing that i'm talking about is and that thing is grenades now if you guys want to know eight secret tricks that pro players do with grenades in free fire make sure to go and check out this video